Hello students, a warm welcome to all of you. In this module, we are going to discuss about 13th chapter in our grade 10 CBSC curriculum that is surface areas and volumes. So the name of the topic is surface areas and volumes. So what is this topic all about? So in this concept of surface areas and volumes, whatever we discussed in grade 9, we discussed the same thing. But in grade 10, in addition to that, we discuss about one special solid called frustrum of a cone. And in grade 9, we discussed about individual solids, right? Individual solids in the sense when the dimensions of a cube are given. So we are asked to find what is the surface area or what is the volume or, you know, what is the material required to make a box as such. So these kind of problems exclusively on one particular solid. But in grade 10, we discuss about combined solids. Combined solids are nothing but, suppose when a box is there, which is in the shape of a cube, and suppose a hemispherical depression is surmounted on one top, otherwise surmounted on one face of the cube, then what is the surface area of the resultant solid? Otherwise, what is the volume of the resultant solid? Or else there is a wooden cube. A wooden cube is carved out a hemispherical depression is carved out from one face, then what is the surface area of the resultant solid? Or else two cubes are joined end to end. What would be the surface area? Otherwise, what would be the volume of the resultant solid? And uh, like especially speed distance time problems, speed distance time problems in order to find volume as well as in order to find surface areas. So, on the whole, we discuss about combined solids. For that, have a quick recap on what are all the concepts, what are all the solids that we are, we have already discussed in grade 9 and we are going to discuss in grade 10. See, we have some special solids being discussed and being introduced in grade 9 as well as 10. So, those special solids are the very first solid is a cuboid and second one is a cube and the third one is a cylinder and fourth one is a cone and the fifth one is sphere and the sixth one is of course hemisphere And lastly, in our grade 10, we are going to introduce that is frustum of a cone. Frustum of a cone, otherwise cone part of frustum. So let us have a look on all these solids once again because the formulas of base area, curved surface area or lateral surface area total surface area as well as volume are very very important and according to board examination point of view every single step carries marks if you write the formula formula exclusively carries half mark and if you draw the relevant figure according to the given problem of course it might carry marks and the information given in the problem also carries marks so that everything every single step is very important is countable right so everything should be counted so that is why you will have to understand it clearly and you will have to remember clearly what are all the concepts that we discussed in this solids okay so coming to cuboid so what do you mean by a cuboid so when you observe a cuboid you can see um, around you there are so many number of cuboids a cuboid is a solid figure whose length may not be equal to breadth or breadth may not be equal to height or height may not be equal to length 
or length is not equal to height is not equal to breadth so if any two dimensions are at least any two dimensions are different then that solid prism is said to be a cuboid so i am going to draw this so first thing that we are discussing about a cuboid so in this cuboid i am going to draw one cuboid here see this is one cuboid or you can even call it as a rectangular prism also okay see in this case of cuboid once you observe the dimensions so the dimensions are going to be this dimension can be treated as length and this dimension can be treated as breadth and this dimension can be treated as thickness otherwise height so every cuboid has how many number of faces how many number of vertices how many number of edges and what is the relationship between number of vertices number of edges number of faces of a prism of course for a pyramid also so a mathematician called euclid has given a relationship between number of faces number of vertices number of edges for a prism otherwise a pyramid so that is what whether it is applicable in this or not let us have a look on this how many number of faces are there so i am going to identify the number of faces so the number of faces of a cuboid so every cuboid has six number of faces right so the number of faces is going to be six and how many number of edges are there how many number of edges are there for example i have my mobile of course this mobile is in the shape of a cuboid right because the length is not equal to width of course not equal to thickness also so i am going to utilize this in order to find the number of faces edges as well as number of vertices see the number of faces this is one face and opposite to it this is another face this one is the another face and these two are two faces and this is one face and opposite to it this is another face there four totally four and then 5 and then 6 so the number of faces equal to 6 and coming to number of edges then be very careful number of edges so what do you mean by edge the edge is the combination of two different faces okay see here i am going to figure out the number of edges first edge second edge third edge fourth edge similarly i have fifth edge sixth edge 7 8 9 10 11 12 so there are totally 12 number of edges are there for a cuboid and coming to the number of vertices so vertex is the combination of two edges okay how many vertices are there first vertex second vertex third vertex fourth vertex 5 6 7 8 so there are totally eight vertices so i am going to write here number of vertices is equal to 8 see here number of faces f is equal to 6 number of edges e is equal to 12 number of vertices v is equal to 8 then there is a relationship between number of faces vertex vertices as well as edges that is f plus v is equal to e plus 2 okay what is the value of f here f is equal to 6 plus v is equal to 8 is equal to e is 12 plus 2 so 6 plus 8 is equal to 14 is equal to 14 so that this is what is the formula called f plus v is equal to e plus 2 is called euler's formula so euler's formula is the relationship between euler's formula gives the relationship between number of faces number of edges number of vertices of any prism otherwise any pyramid please be very careful this is one of the important property or important formula that you can utilize right so this is about number of faces number of vertices number of edges of a cuboid of course even if you take a cube also it remains same you already learned about this coming to the areas how many number of bases are there for example when you talk about the base if we want to place this object somewhere we will we will have to place like this so when you are placing like this then this face can be considered as the base so if this is the base its opposite face can also be considered as the base so that how many number of bases are there 
there are two bases and what is generally the shape of the base shape of the base is equal to a rectangle right so for this prism this is the length as well as this is the breadth so that is why i can consider it as base area of cuboid is equal to length into breadth that is the base area right and coming to lateral surface area what do you mean by lateral surface other than bases the other faces other than bases what are all the faces called lateral surfaces lateral surfaces how many number of lateral surfaces are there 1 2 3 4 so the sum of all these lateral surfaces are add up to the area called lateral surface area let us have a look on this for this surface for this face especially what is the area it is being a rectangle the area is equal to this is the length and this is the height so l into h this is lh this is also lh so that lateral surface area is going to be 2 lh plus coming here this is also a rectangle but this is called as a base and this is h so that this is breadth and this is h so b into h this side also b into h so it would be 2 bh 2 lh plus 2 bh is going to be 2 times h into l plus b this is what is called lateral surface area of cuboid okay lateral surface area of cuboid is equal to 2h into l plus b or else lateral surface area means if you consider this room other than the roof as well as the base so it is also called as the lateral surface area of the room lateral surface area can also be considered as area of four walls of a room so when you are asked to find area of four walls of a room with the given measurements then you must use the formula that is 2h into l plus b so 2h into l plus b is the formula for the lateral surface area of cuboid otherwise the area of four walls of a room can be calculated by using 2h into l plus b after that total surface area or simply you can call it as surface area of cuboid surface area means what or total surface area means what area of all the faces area of all the faces so area of all the faces means can be easily calculated it has two bases so that two base areas and then lateral surface area so two base area is nothing but one base area is lb two base areas is 2lb plus just now we found lateral surface area that is 2h times l plus b so totally when you take one two common remaining this is lb and this is h into l plus b that is bh plus lh this is what is called the total surface area otherwise surface area of cuboid and coming to the diagonal what do you mean by diagonal of a cuboid so here this diagonal is pretty much interesting because suppose in your room four walls of your room if you want to place a rod if you want to place a rod which has the maximum length how do you place the rod in the in your room then definitely you will have to see one edge see one edge for example for our board this is the edge and that is the top edge when you place it then it is called the diagonal but in your room you choose one of the corner it should be either top it should be either top corner extreme top corner and uh, the exact opposite extreme bottom corner extreme top corner as well as the extreme bottom corner of its opposite then the line segment so obtained is said to be the diagonal otherwise that is where the place you can keep the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in four walls of a room so that diagonal of a cuboid means the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in four walls of a room and of course we already discussed and derived that formula in grade 9 that is diagonal of cuboid diagonal of cuboid is equal to square root l square plus b square plus h square this is what is called diagonal of cuboid okay diagonal of cuboid means what is the maximum length of the rod that can be placed in four walls of a room root over l square plus b square plus h square coming to the volume 
So here volume plays a major role in all the solids. See when you have a solid and it is maintaining uniform thickness. A solid maintaining uniform thickness. For example, my cuboid is maintaining uniform thickness all over. So when any cuboid otherwise any solid maintaining uniform thickness then it can be the volume can be calculated by using base area multiplied by the corresponding height base area multiplied by the corresponding height when a solid has a uniform thickness so every cuboid is a prism and for a cuboid the thickness remains same all over that is why we can use volume of the cuboid is equal to base area multiplied by height so base area is equal to l into b and height is equal to h so that l into b into h is the formula for a volume of cuboid so then here we discussed about all the measurements about a cuboid so what are the measurements of a cuboid when length breadth as well as height are given first you should think about what is the base area and what is the lateral surface area and what is the total surface area and what is diagonal of a cuboid and what is volume of the cuboid right so and basically what do you mean by cuboid cuboid means either length is not equal to breadth or breadth is not equal to height or height is not equal to length otherwise l is not equal to b is not equal to height then you can call the prism is a cuboid and these are about the brief history regarding cuboid and coming to the next solid what is the next solid here next solid is a modified cuboid what is that modified cuboid where length should be equal to breadth should be is equal to height when length is equal to breadth is equal to height then that solid figure is said to be a cube so for a cube length equal to breadth is equal to height so here it remains same as like your uh, cube see this is for example a cube if you can call it as a cube for this cube you can understand here length is equal to breadth is equal to height so when all of them are same i am taking one more letter to indicate length as well as breadth as well as height let it be some small a and we can obtain everything from cuboid okay here base area base area of this cube is going to be area of the square because length equal to breadth is equal to height then every single face of a cube is a square so that base area of square base area of a square is equal to base area of a cube is equal to same that is a square so area of the base is going to be a square and coming to lateral surface area lateral surface area of cube is going to be lateral surface area means four faces so 4 into a square is equal to 4 a square as well as what is total surface area since it has totally six faces so 6 into a square is going to be 6 a square and coming to the diagonal right so diagonal of square what is this diagonal of a cube is going to be root over l square plus b square plus h square l square is a square b square is also a square h square is also is equal to a square right so then you get root over a square plus a square plus a square is equal to 3a square when you split this root 3 times a is the diagonal of a cube and coming to the volume of a cube so volume of a cube is equal to length into breadth into height otherwise base area multiplied by height so base area is equal to a square multiplied by a is going to be a cube this is about a cube and when you compare cube as well as cuboid so that you can remember formulas easily right coming to the next next solid what is the next solid next solid is going to be a cylinder right so coming to cylinder and when a solid is said to be a cylinder this is also a prism but here both the faces both the faces are two parallel and congruent circles and the lateral surface is a curved surface so then that solid figure is said to be cylinder of course we already discussed about this and here 
if the base radius is perpendicular to the height so this is the height this base radius is perpendicular to the height then that cylinder is said to be right circular cylinder otherwise it is not right circular cylinder okay base radius is always perpendicular to the corresponding height the height of the cylinder is also called as axis of the cylinder okay so here base area of the cylinder is the area of the circle which is going to be pi r square of course there are two bases so that 2 pi r square that is the total base area and coming to curved surface area there is no lateral lateral surface is in the shape of a curve that is why it is curved surface area curved surface area of cylinder is equal to 2 pi r h that is 2 pi r h that is the curved surface area of cylinder and coming to total surface area otherwise surface area of the cylinder is going to be there are two bases so two base area is nothing but 2 pi r square and then <coughs> curved surface area is 2 pi r h so when you take one 2 pi r common then it would be 2 pi r into r plus h this is what is called total surface area or surface area of cylinder and coming to the volume of cylinder volume of cylinder is going to be since cylinder maintains uniform thickness that is why base area multiplied by the corresponding height okay so base area is equal to pi r square multiplied by the corresponding height is equal to h so pi r square into h is equal to pi r square h is the formula for volume of cylinder and this is about cylinder and coming to the next solid what is the next solid we have the next solid is a cone okay next solid is a cone what do you mean by a cone let us have a solid in this solid one base of the solid is a circle and its opposite is a vertex and its opposite is a vertex then that solid is said to be a cone and for a cone this is the base radius so base radius is always perpendicular to the corresponding height so if base radius is perpendicular to the height then that cone is said to be right circular cone okay and uh, this is the height this height is called slant height l is called slant height and if you observe this particular triangle the particular triangle is a right angle triangle according to pythagoras theorem hypotenuse square equal to side square plus side square it means l square is equal to h square plus r square okay then l is equal to square root h square plus r square by using this formula you can find out what is the slant height of a cone and coming to the dimensions see here its base is a circle so that base area of cone is equal to pi r square base area is equal to pi r square and of course it has a curved surface so the curved surface area can be obtained by using the area of the sector formula so curved surface area of cone is equal to pi r l pi r l where l is equal to root over h square plus r square so pi r into root over h square plus r square that is curved surface area coming to the total surface area otherwise surface area that is one base area and only curved surface area because there are no two bases there is only one base so base area plus curved surface area so base area is going to be pi r square and curved surface area is pi r l so totally if you take one pi r common then it would be r plus l otherwise l plus r that is what is the surface area of cone and coming to the volume so volume of cone is exactly one third volume of cylinder as per the experimental verification so we can say that volume of cone is going to be one third volume of cylinder as volume of cylinder is equal to of course one third volume of cylinder means having the same base as well as the same height so then only volume of cone is equal to one third volume of cylinder which is equal to one third volume of cylinder is equal to pi r square h therefore the volume of cone is equal to one third pi r square h this is about a cone after that if you have consider the next solid that is what called sphere okay 
so if you have a sphere okay so sphere this is the center of the sphere and of course this is what called radius of the sphere and this is the radius of the sphere and of course this is also radius of the sphere and for a sphere if you observe so the next solid is a sphere for a sphere you have only one dimension that is what called radius of the sphere and when you place a sphere then the base of the sphere is small point so small point in the sense the area of a point is almost zero it is negligible so that is why we do not consider what is the base area of sphere but curved surface area otherwise we can completely called as surface area of the sphere so surface area of the sphere is going to be 4 pi r square so it can be derived by using the concept called integration so you will learn that concept in intermediate r plus 1 plus 2 so surface area is equal to 4 pi r square and coming to volume of sphere is going to be 4 third pi r cube okay so these two are the dimensions of sphere and coming to half of the sphere what do you call that that is called half sphere what is the another name of half sphere that is called hemisphere so hemisphere is nothing but half sphere coming to this half sphere for example this is the base of the half sphere and this is of course curved surface and this is the center of the base this is the radius and of course this is also the radius and both of them are perpendicular here you can consider what is the base of the hemisphere so what is the base area of hemisphere area of the base is nothing but it should be a circle so that area of the base is equal to pi r square and it has curved surface curved surface area of hemisphere is nothing but half of curved surface area of sphere surface area of sphere is equal to 4 pi r square half of surface area is nothing but half of 4 pi r square is going to be 2 pi r square so it is 2 pi r square and coming to the surface area or total surface area of hemisphere pi r square plus 2 pi r square is going to be 3 pi r square and coming to the volume of hemisphere exactly half of the volume of the sphere half of volume of sphere is equal to half into 4 third pi r cube 2 once 2 twos are 4 so it would be 2 third pi r cube so this is about history regarding volume of hemisphere and coming to the next solid the next solid is frustrum cone part of frustrum or frustrum of a cone frustrum of a cone is nothing but it is one part of the cone and the, the formulas are going to be we are going to derive those formulas if you have this is the top because this is a part cone part of a frustrum this is a part of a cone and if you join them then you can find out one figure this is absolutely a part of a cone when you extend these parts of the slant height they will meet at a point okay so this is what called slant height of a cone this is top radius capital r this is bottom radius small r of course this is the height of the frustum of cone so this is always perpendicular to the base radius that is why it is called right circular figure coming to this frustrum so in this frustrum of cone we have two bases one base area so base area one is going to be pi capital r square and this is another base that is base area two which is going to be pi small r square when you add both of them you will get the total base area top as well as bottom and coming to curved surface area of this frustrum is pi l into capital R plus small r. Of course, we can derive that easily. That is the curved surface area of the frustrum. And coming to the total surface area, otherwise surface area of the frustrum is going to be base area 1 plus base area 2 plus curved surface area. It means pi capital R square plus pi small r square plus pi l into capital r plus small r but here slant height can be calculated l is equal to square root h square plus capital r minus small r whole square that is the slant height of the frustum of a cone and coming to 
volume of a cone is one third pi h into capital R square plus small r square plus capital R into small r. So these are about dimensions of the frustum. And uh, in this module, we discussed about what are all the solids there we are going to discuss and we are going to have an application of finding various uh, finding in various cases. So these are all the solids that we are going to discuss now. And uh, this is the brief introduction about the solids as well as the dimensions, base area, curved surface area, lateral surface area, volume, diagonal, if it is there. Okay, hope you understand. Please do remember all these formulas. I already told you what is the importance of all these formulas uh, in order to solve problems related to surface areas and volumes. So in the coming module, we are going to discuss about set of problems which were given in previous board examinations. Hope you understand. Enjoy the class. Thank you.